Welcome to The Chase Hudson Show, a podcast dedicated to inspiring you to become extraordinary. Each week, we sit down with top-tier business owners, real estate investors, and influencers to inspire you to build your legacy. It's time to level up. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the show. Today, we have Cole Painter on, who is the founder of New Primitive. They do saunas, cold plunge manufacturing, and it's really high end. It's, it's an awesome product. But Cole, uh, Cole and I dive into his journey starting in uh, summer sales and doing door to door and transitioning out of there to, uh, to be able to start his own business and everything from development of the product to marketing. And, and, and then we talk a lot about kind of the mental benefits and health benefits. And Cole's got a, a really, really great story a really good guy so excited for you guys to hear this one and with that let's dive in all right everyone welcome to another episode of the show today we are privileged to have cole painter in the studio who's the founder of new primitive a company that specializes in premium outdoor sauna and cold plunge kits prior to new primitive cole had a successful career in the door-to-door sales industry uh and that's just scratching the surface cole but i'm excited to have you in man thank you for having me i'm excited to jump in yeah I was saying before we started recording that you and I had a, a nice sauna session in one of your products a couple of weeks ago, which was a fantastic ex- experience for me um, compared to my, my normal Vasa uh, experiences that I have on the daily. Um, but it's an awesome product, man. Excited what you guys have built. Thank you. Sure, yeah, I was really surprised. Cool. Found out we were neighbors. Yeah, just a few houses down, small world. Um, we've got a lot of mutual connections, and so I'm glad we could we could get together and do this. Um, so yeah, man, first thing I like to talk about is tell us a little about your upbringing. So h- who you are today, knowing who you are today, I guess what should listeners understand about your childhood experiences growing up that, that molded you to become the man you are? Yeah, I, I grew up with four brothers, so... A lot of testosterone, a lot of competitiveness, but we were all, um, I think if you knew us growing up, we were all very independent, um, always just kind of doing creative projects, uh, like we were just always building stuff. We were building motocross tracks, uh, and it was never really for money, it was more for fun, like we were just always looking like, all right, what's exciting to us? Like, what would we want to do? So we, we'd we build, like, foam pits that we could jump our dirt bikes into and motocross tracks and um, just all sorts of things. And we just did kind of wherever our energy took us, and we we definitely had a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, did you grow up in, was it in Utah? Yeah, grew up in Riverton, Utah. Cool. And, yep, kind of just out a little bit in the country a little bit. Yeah. Are your brothers, are you guys still tight today? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I've gotten that impression. I follow, obviously, like, follow you on Instagram and stuff, but it seems like the outdoors has been a big part of your life. Is that true? Kind of outdoors? Yeah. Extreme sports? Yeah, extreme sports. We've always loved, like, just being out in nature and just pushing each other. We've we've always pushed each other, and whether that's in running, jumping, sports, just whatever. We've always just been kind of – pushing each other to go harder, go further. Yeah, love it, man. Um, did you guys, I mean, did you have any sort of, like, entrepreneurial bug growing up, even younger? Like, I don't know if you guys ever competed in that way or, you are you know, inspired by your parents or anything, other influences growing up that you are like, I kind of, I mean, you did sales, but, like, it was kind of like, oh, planted seeds of, of wanting to do something on your own. Yeah, yeah, my, uh, my father was a, as a, was an entrepreneur and um i think like if you want to there was a quote i heard that said if you want to understand the an entrepreneur study the the juvenile delinquent because it's just kind of this independent person that just wants to blaze their own path and and that was just kind of like our our style, I guess, is young at a young age. Like when we would have babysitters, I bet they were always like intimidated because we always made it pretty clear, like, all right, like we're the ones in charge here. Like, thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, 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 I love that, man. That, that's great. Um, that's that's awesome. Um, so I saw at least on your LinkedIn. I always try to do a little bit of research ahead of time, but 
You went to USU, Utah State? Yep. Okay. Yeah, tell us a little about that experience, man. Like, what was the mentality going into college? You know, what did you want to get out of that experience and, and kind of where did it lead you? Yeah, so I went to USU and graduated with a marketing degree and a minor in entrepreneurship. And I I was never great at school. Like in elementary, I was in the resource class. Like I always struggled with reading and writing. On my ACT, I think I got like a 16. So it was just never my strong suit. But I ended up going to college, really had to work for my grades, um, and just ended up exposing myself to a lot of different ideas and that was kind of the goal is just to just to learn you know I've, I've found over time that I just learn in different ways than I do in school and um, but all of that kind of made me a more well-rounded person I guess prepare me to go into the 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 professional realm yeah did you I mean wh- when you went into school like I know everyone has different perspective or mentality like was it, hey, I'm going to study marketing and then go get a job, you know, for a, a tech firm doing marketing or some product development? Or what what did you want to get? Did you did you start applying for jobs or how did that transition shake out? And, and, and ultimately, I guess, getting into the door-to-door space. Yeah. Yeah. So deep down, like, I guess I've always known I was just going to be an entrepreneur. I was just going to do what I wanted to do. Um, so it was just kind of what channel and what path was going to get me there. And so I, during school, I paid for my own school. So I had to always go out in the summer and um, do summer sales and quickly found I could write my own check every day and, and then I could live the lifestyle I wanted. So I, during that time, I would go to school and I would race motocross. And those were basically my motivations for going out and doing summer sales and putting in the work for the four months. And then I would just go back and race my motorcycle and and do school yeah love it man and and, well how did you get exposed to -to door-to-door like with just a buddy hit you up and was like you should do this and you know what was that story like yeah so i came home from my lds mission um from fiji and someone hit me up and was like hey we can do summer sales and you can make you know your classic pitch like 40 50 thousand in the summer i was like no way um so and then I learned that you could just like negotiate and get all these deals. I was, a, I'd never even got out and I was out negotiating deals and um, I was like, this is fun. This is kind of a cool thing. And so I went out in the summer and, and struggled for like three weeks. Didn't really get very many sales, I remember. And I just remember kind of buckling down and uh, reading books and studying and trying to learn it. And the, that summer ended up turning into a super good situation for me. So I, from that for that point on, just kind of went, um, just went head, just all in and um, stayed in it for about six years. Wow. Okay. So who did you, who did you start with? So I started out with um, Fox up in Logan. Okay. And Is that pest? Or so? Yeah, okay. pest control. Okay. Then I went to Green X and... From Green X, I ended up starting, we were during that time where it was like grit, and then we were in another region at Green X, and we ended up splitting off and um, starting what is now RID, and yeah. I was a branch owner over there and started um, building that in Miami. Yeah, okay, Miami. That's cool. I mean, you know Logan, my brother. Shout out to Logan. Yeah. He was- uh, Homie. Homie. Red, uh, red OG as well. Um, but that's cool because Logan was doing Orlando. You were not too far then in yeah. Miami. Cool, Matt. Well, yeah, I guess overall, like six years in past, right? I mean, what were some of the lessons learned that or, or things that you took away from that experience? Man, yeah, a lot, a lot was taken away from that experience because at the end of the day, that's what kind of pushed me into what I'm doing today with New Primitive and, um, you know, I think a lot of a lot of uh, positive things and like writing my own check, just being able to have that confidence that I can generate revenue. Like it doesn't matter what product I'm selling or service. Like I know that if you plug me into an organization, I can go and generate revenue. And I think leading teams was another massive, like being able to cultivate a space that 
you know, um, is is has positive energy and brings people together and motivates them to go work and drive to a common goal. Like I think that was probably the biggest lessons I learned. Um, and then yeah, that's then I just kind of got pushed into new primitive. Yeah, so let's talk about that transition. I guess yeah, for new primitive, like how were you enjoying the the summer sales gig i mean it's a grind right it's like four or five months of the year you're on the doors you're in florida it's obviously freaking hot but it's just you have to have a ton of resilience and then the recruiting thing as well is like every year kind of resets right and you're trying to get your downline built up your team built up retention like were you tired of it or was it was it more like i you know I have a better opportunity here with, with new primitive or were you like kind of done with, with that gig or how, how are you mentally, what was your mental state working in that industry for so long? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I think like at that time I was very oriented, like achievement oriented. So like what led me into what I was doing at, in school and in my work, like just very achievement oriented and always had to be doing something. And, um, so summer sales, I, you know, I was productive, but I was getting burnt out and I was getting, I was getting super unhappy and just wasn't finding fulfillment where I was at. And, um, I think I, at one point I had ulcers, like I had terrible anxiety and just kind of came to a place where it's like, okay, hey, this just, this just isn't working anymore and need to find something that I guess... I find, I understand it works for other people and this is my own personal experience. But for me, I was like, okay, I've got to find something where I find a little bit more fulfillment and um, self-expression in. Yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. And so summer sales is very entrepreneurial in itself. I know you've, you'd had aspirations from a young age to be an entrepreneur, but what, yeah, what gave you the motivation to, to leave a well-paid gig take a risk and start something on your own pain. Like it was just like, okay, that's enough. Like I, it was a pretty clear moment. Like it wasn't a decision I waffled in for a second. Like I felt this, I felt that I needed to make this change and I didn't know exactly what I was going to go into. Like I didn't have this insane idea of a business that, was going to be profitable and was going to work. It was just like, no, I just knew kind of had this feeling of what I wanted and that I needed to pursue it. And so when I spoke with my buddies over at RID and they, they were super cool about it, but I was just kind of like, Hey, here's, here's the way I'm feeling laid out my options and just said, if this is, you know, if this is what I got to do, then I'm going to pursue, um, this fully, I didn't want to have one foot in rid and one foot out. Like I knew whatever I wanted to do, I wanted to put my full self in. So that's, yep. that's at the end of yeah. the day what I decided to do. Makes sense, man. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess why did you want to get into like the health and wellness space, you know, transitioning from pest control? It's, it's, it's a different industry, right? There's not a, I mean, there's probably it's not a ton of overlap, right? So what was the driving force between choosing that as kind of your target market? Yeah. I mean, this, this kind of has a whole understory to it. Um, cause I, I was at this time it was during COVID, right? So I was just kind of observing everything that was going on and the narratives that were being pushed, the, the leadership, I was just kind of opening my eyes to all these different things. And, um, it's, I wanted to be a part of the solution. So I was like, okay, if things got to change, like we're in this position, things got to change. What does change look like? And for me, that was like, I had to change myself. I had to change my beliefs. I had to change the way I was perceiving the world. And, um, yeah, so it was, it was a lot of like, and then I wanted to provide something that was just good for people, that reconnected people, that brought us back to the to a community and to ourselves and just wanted something that wasn't really focused on money or power. 
It was just like, here, what is the best thing that I could provide someone that would allow them time just to sit in quiet and reconnect with who they are and a community? I think community was a huge part of that. Just, you know, let's re-engage as a people that's focused on a unifying thing of who we are. Yeah, love that. And you had like a kind of a health transformation yourself, right? I mean, was it kind of during that time as well? I've seen some stuff that you've posted. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I think there's a time where we all have to kind of look at, you know, what systems are we operating on? And when it's time to upgrade those systems. And I think the systems that I I was realizing at that time were just, it was time to upgrade. I was, those, the path I was going down was towards burnout and really just unhappiness. So I decided that I was going to make that change. And that's really what the whole pursuit of health and wellness and new primitive was for me. It was just this whole transformation of myself. So yeah, I decided I was going to, you know, do a crazy, um, like challenge myself mentally. It was more of like a spiritual thing than it was like running an ultra marathon or starting a business. Like, I mean, those two things were great, but they were more just like challenges. Um, I saw as more that I needed to build this self-belief and, and recreate how I saw myself because at the time it just wasn't, wasn't working. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And and I guess more specifically, like, why why the sauna and cold plunge, you know? Like, had you kind of been doing that or looking into it before? I mean, what was it about, like, all right, I want to start a business. Let's, let's focus in on kind of a sauna, a specialized high-end sauna. Like, how did that idea come about? Yeah, there's a – so there's a passionate side to me that's just very passionate, but then I do have this, like – kind of business side that um I was following like I follow I love Alex Hermosi and I I love um um some of these these business guys and as I was following them I was like okay how how am I going to start something quick enough that I'm going to be able to um like the saunas and the cold plunges were the attraction to what I was doing and so when I started out I wanted to solve rich people problems. So I ended up building saunas and thought that that would be a great tool for them to be able to, to add into their daily routine lifestyle. Yeah. And it is, man, it's obviously it's been a big trend the last few years, but I think it's one that, I mean, I've looked in some of the research and you know, there's a ton of benefits, not just physically, but mentally as well. Um, that's great, man. So what, so, okay. So just timeline, what year was, this is like 2020, 21 that you quit, you, you left red mm-hmm. or, okay. Yeah. 2021. 2021. So had you had like this concept in the works for some time or was it like, Hey, clean break. And then you kind of started from scratch with new primitive. What was kind of the, the overlap there? Clean break, no plan. Yeah. Just. So you were out. Was going to make it happen. Yeah. You're like, yeah. I'm out. I got to do something. Um, yeah. So tell us, like, I love kind of hearing the nitty gritty. Like, you're all right. You're, you quit rid. I mean, I guess from a financial standpoint, like, were you in a position that you were like, all right, I can float myself here for a year or two, like, and figure this out? Or like, where were you kind of financially, mentally, like? Yeah. I mean, state? that's all relative, right? Like, people have their comfort level, like. And it's wherever you set that, like, you're going to probably stay around. Like, if you go below it, you're going to work yourself up pretty quick to get to get up to that point again. And I think my comfort level was pretty low that time. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, but it, like, I, I definitely wasn't in a position where I was super co- comfortable. Like, I definitely had to make something happen. Mm-hmm. And so, like, me and my wife were we were to the point where we were Airbnb in our house on the weekends. Really? Oh yeah. And we were (laughs) starting a meal prep business of, we're just cooking in our own kitchen and we were doing like 700 meals a week. So, you know, we were hustling, like we were, we were just doing whatever we could to really make this work for us. 
Yeah, man. So, uh, so I guess, yeah, were there other business ideas or iterations before New Primitive or, or was that it? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I went through four or five different businesses before I ended up landing on New Primitive as sauna and cold plunges. Like, it was always named New Primitive. Okay. But the channel changed. Got it. So, I started out in, like, I was doing some, I wanted to start a preventive care clinic because that was important to me was like, I, th- I felt like our, the way our society was focused was not at the root of problems. So I was like, okay, so we saw that in COVID. So we need to not just focus on all these like external things. Let's get to the root of it. And let's do a preventive care clinic where I partnered up with uh, my buddy Peyton Newman that was a physician. And then my brother Gents that was a collegiate athlete. And we were going to kind of create this dynamic of um preventive care and then we started doing um wellness coaching and it just evolved and turned into building saunas i was really the inspiration was building these tiny home wellness retreats that were out in nature like Mm. that was the that was the idea was I wanted to create this kind of luxury feel outside in nature on this piece of land in Utah where people could just go out and disconnect from all the distractions and all the chaos and just relax and rejuvenate and then go back and find clarity with what they're doing. Yeah, love that. I mean, yeah, that preventative care is, a, I think that's a solid idea too because I, I always tell my wife, I'm like, I guess it's time for my annual physical I like intermountain health care like whatever the random like family medicine and they got going there and it's like how are you doing well here's like yeah. your, your your like pal your basic blood palate test and then like here's a questionnaire about are you stressed or not and i just feel like yeah. Yeah, i'm a child in there <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that was on? i mean that was the thing man that's where it came from is i had all this anxiety and i didn't know where it was coming from and I actually didn't even know how to label it at the time, like how I was feeling. I just didn't feel okay. Like that's how I would describe it. And like all the solutions were, you know, get medications and things that were just going to like SRIs that were just going to, you know, distribute your serotonin across time. And so I was just like, none of those like really made sense. Just like the, yeah, like the vaccine, it just didn't make sense. Like these these quick fixes just didn't make sense in my head. And as I observe like the natural processes and things like that, it was just like, okay, so how do we get to the root of these things? And that's, that's what we need to be focused on. And, and that kind of evolved for me into this like internal dive in. All right. What's the root that's creating the, right. the expression? Yeah. I love that, man. Well, you know, maybe that's a second iteration or dead down the road. So are your bro- is your brother and your buddy, are, is anyone else involved in New Primitive other than you and, I guess, I don't know if Mikel's involved, but yeah. Yeah. You guys. Yeah, so right now it's, it's just me and I've just been working with, I mean, I have a team. I have a team that supports me, um, like a manufacturing facility. I have digital media. I have, you know, I have my different places, but as far as like, um, ownership in the yeah. company. It's just me. Cool. So then going back to like the nitty gritty. So you want, you, you land on cold plunges and saunas. How did you then go from idea to like concept and like manufacturing? Walk us through that. Like, was it drawing stuff on a board? Are you like hiring a designer? Like how do you get from A to Z there? <laughs> By necessity. Um, and it, I mean, it really started out with just a picture. Like I just, again, like kind of that off grid wellness retreat inspiration. I thought the sauna and the cold plunge, having that in your backyard was like the perfect example of what that could represent in someone's life was this place that they could retreat to. It was a sanctuary where they could just relax and rejuvenate. Right. And so I started selling this picture of this sauna I found online and was approaching influencers, different people, and was just like, hey, does this look cool? Would you would you be down to buy this? And they're like, yeah. And so I would just went through making it happen. We I had a builder that could 
build the saunas for me. And so we started just building and reiterating and figuring out how to do it better and better. And then all of a sudden I had 65 saunas across the country and was like, okay, it's time to like really put this into, um, something legit. And so I, I found a manufacturing facility and, um, and it's just grown step by step, inch by inch from, from that. So who, yeah, who built the first one for you? Was it like a, some contractor guy or like, how did you literally the first unit who, yeah. who did that? <laughs> you? Yeah. No, no, he was a builder. He was, um, I, so I was building the sauna farm. I had a sauna farm that I was putting saunas on and was going to like reserve them out to people. Wait, so a sauna farm, is that like a spot where there's a bunch of saunas? Or Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So it was just a place, again, out in nature on a farm. There yeah. were goats out there. Um, but I had a few saunas that I had positioned out there, and we're going to start re- um, just reserving them out for people to come and sauna and cold plunge. And then um, I a builder came and approached me and said, hey, how about I build these for you? And I said, that sounds amazing. Let's do it. And that's that's where it started. And who, like, do you remember who your first buyer was of Asana? Was it like, I, I mean, not specifically, but like maybe that that experience, that how you felt when you sold your first one? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, holy smokes. Like, I just sold a $15,000 sauna and yeah. this thing can work. Like, and, and all of a sudden I started to see on social media I remember one night specifically I was scrolling. I was like, dang, this is getting popular. Like Mm -hmm. people are starting to like sauna and cold plunge. And I just happened to be at the right place and right time with it. Yeah. And now where do you guys manufacture? Remind me. So we have a manufacturing facility in West Jordan now. It's about 5,000 square feet. And yeah. And and that's start to finish. They're building the saunas, kind of the whole thing. And then you ship out from there. Yep, so we've got assembly, an assembly line of saunas that um, just get, we, we build them about six to eight weeks, and then we can ship them out, and we handle the install from anywhere around the country. Yeah, that's really convenient. I mean, the the um, marketing you guys do, and just like the aesthetic of the sauna is really unique. I feel like it, it definitely has that higher end look like it's not just like a wooden box you know so you guys have done a really good job with that i mean was that intentional i assume like trying to differentiate yourself a little bit there yeah i mean i love nice things like i love luxury and i wanted it to feel nice like i wanted it to be again like just something good that i could give to people and so when i went into designing and building that product it wasn't all right you know this is my margin. I need to have a 50% margin. And so this is what the product quality needs to be. It was built. Here's the level and standard that this product needs to be is quality. And then here is the markup, right? Yeah. And, and it was just, I wanted to, to be able to put these in people's backyards and have it be a centerpiece that pulls the whole landscaping and builds this Zen space for them. Yeah, love it. That's that's amazing. So going back to like capital and like risk. So you had kind of sold out of RID. Sounds like it costs several grand to build one of these saunas. Like, I guess how, what was that like having to put up your own money or did you borrow some money or like how did, how was that whole thing to try to get the business off the ground? Yeah, I mean, I think good businesses um, are cash flowed from the beginning. Like, if someone were to give me a million dollars or two million dollars at the beginning, I wouldn't have known what the heck to do with it. I just don't think that's how good businesses are grown. Like I've, like you said, it's grown out of necessity. It's grown out of frustration. It's grown out of the ability to have to like work with the resources you have and move it forward that way and so i have cash flowed um new primitive from the very beginning i haven't pumped any capital or raised any money to to grow it that's great man and yeah i mean high level like is it a hard industry to make money in like margins costs like your your logistics side like yeah, it, it's extremely challenging business like yeah. just in general it's a very challenging business like it has ebbs and flows and you're dealing with luxury products. So you have 
um, different seasons that they're going to be selling in and, and, um, the logistics, it's funny how you, you think you're getting into one business where it's like, all right, I'm building saunas and it's all about the product. Um, but then you figure out it's a whole nother business with logistics and that I have to figure out how to get a 16 foot by eight foot sauna that weighs 7,800 pounds into someone's backyard. That's and, and do that eight to nine of them a, a month. Right. So that gets kind of crazy. So I've had yeah. to just kind of really work and, and try to figure out how we could do that. And we're kind of blazing our own trail in this industry. Like we have, you have hot tubs and then you have like tiny homes and then you have saunas. And so hot tubs, you can put on a dolly and just like wheel them into people's backyards and um, saunas. You just can't do that. So we, we crane them over people's homes and crane them over their, the, their backyards. And yeah, yeah do what you gotta do. I feel like hot tubs are hot tubs. I don't know. Are those on the out? I just, are those still a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do people like those? Well, if, I mean, if you ask our clients, like a lot of our clients will have a sauna, a hot tub and a cold plunge. Like oh, it's thermal culture. Right. Yeah. And so for, but I would say how frequently people use a sauna um, versus a hot tub, our clients are using their saunas four to five times a week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hot tub is like a, you got to commit to that, you yeah. know? Um, that's awesome, dude. I, I guess, yeah. Talk a little bit about your, your like marketing sales strategy. Like how are you getting the word out? How, how has growth been for you guys? Yeah. So we first in, initially started out just by doing partnerships with influencers and, uh, word of mouth. And in the first couple years that worked for us really well. Um, it was popular enough and getting a lot of free advertising where, People were coming to us and hearing about it and wanted a sauna. Um, But now, you know, um, as we're starting to approach scaling this and we're we're working on um, telling the story, sharing what the experience can be for people. Because I think right now you hear about all the physical benefits, but I think the the real beautiful part about sauna and cold plunge and where other cultures like Scandinavia and Finland, like they do these exercises every single day. It's part of their routine where it's more of a mindful and spiritual exercise. And I think in our day and age, we deal with so much stress, but we don't know how to deal with stress. We're not really taught that. Like we're taught in health, like how to go, right? We know movement. We know to eat well. We know to count your macros. Be careful of what calories you're putting in your body, right? But we do, we aren't really taught the recovery aspect and the rest aspect. And that's where I've seen so much benefit in my life where taking that time to when you feel like, because this was a challenge for me, like remember during summer sales, I was go, go, go and be productive. I couldn't lay on the couch and just relax. hmm I, I felt guilty, yeah. right? Like, man, I should be doing something. For sure. And so I think that rest and recovery is you start to um, really focus that and ap- apply that into your life. That's when you can start to go further, right? Yeah. And yeah. and actually feel capable of that. Right. Yeah. And I think just yeah, helping people understand that side of it helps a ton from, a, from like a marketing standpoint because I think a lot of people miss that depth of it so that's great man well so yeah you, t- you mentioned scaling so where are you guys at today and like what's what's your goal going forward yeah so yeah exciting times right now i mean we have in the in the industry i we're putting out probably the most high design saunas in the nation and we're doing it at a affordable price comparatively right Cause sure. you kind of have the barrel saunas that are really cheap eight to six thousand dollars and then you have to install them yourself and then you have the really custom saunas that are starting at fifty thousand dollars and so we're right there in the middle of luxury sauna and cold plunge and we're um we're really i think just trying to state our our place in the industry and and as a provider of high quality sauna and cold plunge and 
we're trying, we're building right now eight to 10 units a, a month and um, just get focused on growing and, and increasing sales. And yeah. yeah. Do you guys start manufacturing a sauna after an order is placed or do you have like kits ready to go? Yeah. So we're building inventory right now. Like our real focus is we, what I want to come full circle to is getting back into those like wellness retreats and those luxury resorts. Um, so we're working with like companies like uh, that are on golf courses and resorts and we're just starting to um, add these luxury amenities to that type of yeah style resort. No kidding. Yeah, if you can crack that code, like if every you know, whatever country club in the in the country has a new primitive sauna or like hotel or boutique hotel or mountain resort, Airbnb. Exactly. Right? Well, it, that's where it makes sense. I think the most is like, um, you know, our, our saunas are, they're affordable luxury amenities that are going to last you for decades to come. So um, for these hotels and these Airbnbs, it's shown to increase their, their average nightly rates and increase their occupancy because they rank higher on SEO. Yeah. So uh, going back to marketing, that's where we're kind of focused is just helping Airbnbs and re these resorts understand like these are growing in popularity and your clientele are going to want them as a part of your offering. Yeah. So if I want to buy one of your saunas, what's the, yeah, what's the process like? How do you get one? Yeah, so every client is really special to us, and we, we really want to make sure that we, like, we have a relationship with all of our clients um, because I think it is such a special thing to add to. We, we love it when customers really, like, are intentional about their space, like when they want to create it into a genuine, like, just zen space for them. And so when someone's interested you know, they kind of have an idea of where they want to place the sauna and the cold plunge. And then we hop on a call and um, we walk them through step by step on how to get their site prepared and how we're going to get that sauna back into place. And then we'll go through some of the design specifics. Like you can add an, an XL window that goes from top to bottom. So you can have a really beautiful view of like the mountains or you know, a nature area, like we just had a client put one in front of a, a lake and nice. it's just beautiful. So uh, we'll go through some of the design and then you'll put a deposit down with us and we'll place it into our production line, get it built, um, and then we'll ship it out to you and help you get it installed. Yeah, that's awesome. What's timing like from start to finish to get one installed? Yeah, so it's it's a, about a six to eight week wait time. Mm -hmm. um, and right now we are increasing that inventory so that way we yeah. can start to speed that up and get it to get to the customer faster. Yeah. And then what's like price point range to get like minimum to like the higher end for you guys right now? So we've, we've tried to be very intentional about our product offering. Um, we understand people have unique budgets and space requirements requirements in order to get a sauna and a cold plunge so we have a 16 foot all-inclusive sauna and cold plunge combo right that's massive and super cool experience um, that starts at forty eight thousand, and then we have a eight person sauna that's like basically that it that 16 footer cut in half it's a 10 8 to 10 person sauna it's called the 212 mm -hmm. Um, and that one starts at 24,000 and then we have a nook that is our compact, most sleek design. You can basically fit it anywhere in a yard. Um, it's five feet by eight feet and that one starts at 16,5. So our price range is range from 16,5 to 48,000 yeah. depending on your space and budget. Was the one that in your yard was that, which one was that? That was the 212. So that was our, our eight person. Okay. Nice yeah. man. That was great. Yeah, great experience. Well, cool, man. And then, uh, like, what's your role right now? I mean, are you, <laughs> like, founder, right? Are you just, you mentioned you have a team. Like, yep. what's your day look like? So, man, yeah, I'm wearing a lot of hats right now. Like, I'm I'm sales, I'm marketing, I'm finance, I'm <laughs> taxes, I'm all of it. So, it's, uh, it's right now I'm wearing a lot of hats and um, just 
I'm working with a lot of uh, team members that are helping me out and supporting me in each of those areas. So my day, I, I think that's probably been, you know, the hardest struggle with entrepreneurship is finding what do you focus on and what is going to make the biggest impact because you just have so many things that you can do, right? Um, and that do need work. So you just kind of find and prioritize what is going to make the biggest impact. And so a lot of my days are focused on sales, cash flow. Like I think cash flow is king. You know, all business owners say that because if that runs out, then everything else dries out too. So you just got to keep sales coming in the door and you're always marketing and always selling. Yeah. And is most of that like social media or are you guys, I mean, you mentioned the influencers, word of mouth, but like, are you doing any sort of programmatic, like, Hey, paid ads or like, I don't know, going knocking doors or like, yeah, I do it all. I knock doors. I, really? I go knock doors and I'll go, I'll go. Um, yeah, I'm not afraid to get out there and get gritty with it, but yeah. I also, um, understand like we're doing digital, we're doing digital media. So we're putting content all over the platforms and i'm also doing direct reach out to more of like the bigger deals like those luxury high-end resorts like golf courses and um, airbnbs and trying to kind of create those relationships with those hotels um, and then yeah digital media is focused more on like the end user just attracting those people that believe in what we're doing and want to be a part of it yeah that's great man was well, the end game like I don't know. I mean, it's, it's something like this, uh, something that is just like a legacy. It's a legacy business for you and your family, like 10, 20 years, you grow it. Or, or do you do you envision like, hey, I want to do this for five, 10 years and sell it, sell the business? I don't know if you've even thought about that, but yeah, maybe too soon. <laughs> no, to no, I definitely like, you know, at first I feel like it meant a lot to me, but business is just business. Like for me, this is a personal development Thing. this is a personal journey I'm just on my it's not it's not my business legacy like that can sell and that can you know the business can be the business but for me it's about doing what I'm passionate about doing what I what excites me and following that path whatever how can I serve my community like those are those are important things that I'm asking myself throughout this process and so I'll take it to the end of the line and you know, if see see where that goes, and then go on to the next step. But yeah, yeah, makes perfect evolution sense. makes perfect sense, man. Um, well, I, I I usually we got a few more few more questions here, and we'll, we'll wrap up, Cole. But one thing that I've always found interesting to talk a little bit like mo about money, and you know, money is um is a tool. It's something I think it's an amplifier of kind of who you are as a person, but. Who do you, like, how do you think about money? I mean, you're probably making some good money in door to door. Like, how does, how does money impact your day to day? Like, as, a, as an entrepreneur, there's always kind of that motivation of I want to get to a certain point. But like, how do you think about balancing money with like passion and, and everything else you have going on in your life? I think first and foremost, like money falls value. So again, back to the personal development, like it's who I am, that's going to, generate money right like in summer sales it wasn't all about like give me a five thousand dollar sign-on bonus it was all right i'm gonna go in here and make this undeniable of what i deserve and if you're not willing to pay me that then like that's your choice right so i'm gonna go make i'm gonna go provide the most value i can to an organization and let that money follow and so that's just kind of been the principle that I've lived by. It's just money follows value. And if I'm not providing value, then I'm probably not getting paid. So I've got to go back to building my skill set, putting in the work and making myself more valuable. Yeah. Love that, man. That's great. And then um, in terms of like habits, I know, I know you're very thoughtful when it comes to like the mental health side, you know, we talked a little about it when we were in the sauna, but just like, what are some of the habits or like rituals that you have, have started doing that have really helped you throughout your life? Yeah, I think the main, the core three things are meditation, prayer, and service. And those are the things that I always find myself coming back to. Um, if I'm not, then I'm probably a little misaligned. So 
I've started to implement those in my daily practice because, you know, I feel like through entrepreneurship, I've been constantly reminded like, okay, are you going to just rely on yourself or are you going to walk with God and rely on him through this process? And so I feel like I'll always get to a point in where I'm just like, just done and burnt out and things are just hard. And then I'll be like, okay, like hear a little voice. Like, are you ready to ask me? Are you ready to walk with me? And I can do more for you than you can do for yourself. And so for me, just implementing that, like always asking for help and meditation, like, like, um, formal meditation, not just like going out, moving, running and thinking. It's like, no, laying down, getting really still and silent and really paying attention to where your thoughts go and because where focus goes energy flows right and so like what I just find out what I found out with a lot of my anxiety and then my mental health side of things was just the way I was seeing the world and the way I was believing and so I had to get really aware of of my self-belief because I had a lot of limiting beliefs that kept me from going further in my life. And so with entrepreneurship, you know, going back to that, it's just, I, as I've grown awareness around those self-limiting beliefs, I've been able to grow and evolve and change my perspective and lift my vision up and, you know, see people differently, see myself differently. So good, man. I love, I love all that. Um, when you meditate, are you doing that in your, in the sauna most of the time or is it somewhere else or where do you like to do that? Yeah. You know, I feel like in my house, there is an intentional space for everything. Like, you know, you have, you have your bathroom, you have your shower, you have where you eat, you have where you work and you have where you watch TV and lounge. And so, but I just didn't feel like there was an intentional space to go and meditate and retreat and relax and just have that quiet time away from kids, away from work, away from all the distractions. So, um, that, it's the sauna has been that calm down for me where when I do feel overwhelmed or frustrated in my business, I go, I go to the sauna and I just lay down and relax my nervous system. I breathe, I meditate and get clarity on where I'm at. Cause it's, you know, when we get these fires in our lives or in our businesses that pop up, like say, you know, you lose a client or you lose a lot of money. What happens? Like we, we freak out, right? We get frantic and I used to get in those states all the time. And you just can't think in that place. Like you can't make decisions. You can't have clarity on what you need to do next if you're so scared and living in fear. And so I would use the sauna as a place to just calm down, relax, find clarity, and then make the next step forward and, and make a decision. Yeah, so good. And such a good point. I think in business and life, there's just so many things that can kind of throw you off or or impact your mood or your mental state. And so having a, like a, a very, you know, just a dedicated space to, to reset. That's really important. Love that, man. Um, last couple things, I guess when you think about advice, you'd give your younger self or, or anything you change, you know, (laughs) probably what, I mean, life is life and you have experiences for a reason, but yeah, if you're, you know, coming out of USU again or your 20 year old self? I mean, anything you would tell yourself or do differently or now that you've kind of had the experiences that you've had? Yeah, sure. I would, I would say to my younger self that, you know, you, um, the only thing limiting from limiting you from what you want is your own beliefs and your own stories that you've told yourself and you can rewrite those stories you can change the way you perceive them and feel them and that's yeah yeah. love that man last question um you think about success in life how do you define like a life well lived like how do you define success for for cole painter yeah that's uh i think about that question a lot um and you know, I'm definitely more driven, I guess, a driven person. So like achievement has always been very important to me. And so I've just really had to reflect on that and say, okay, like, what do I want to be able to say 
about myself at the end of my career, the end of my life. And so I think about death a lot. And I, I would love to say that um, I was someone that inspired people and inspired people to be just better human beings. But I think um, success comes to me is how connected I feel to my family and myself. And I think those are the most important things to me and that, you know, everyone says that, but family's everything. Like the best, the best calling that I've ever gotten is the, the dad, you know, when my, when my son calls me dad, that's, that's the most special thing that, you know, I can hear. And I, I want to hear that for the rest of my life and, um, want to be there and have that as my, my, my success. Love it. Well, no, no better way to end, Cole. Thanks so much for your time, man. I've been inspired. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story. Yeah. Thank you, Chase. Cool. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the Chase Hudson Show. If you liked what you heard, please leave me a review and subscribe to this podcast. Reviews really help us to find better guests and to improve the overall quality of the show. If you'd like to connect with me directly or want to learn more about investing in real estate, send me a DM on Instagram at official Chase Hudson. Again, we really appreciate you listening and we'll talk to you on the next episode.